If you are bored right now and you are thinking of actually turning to Netflix or Prime or any other type of mindless activity, I will simply say to you, don't. You're going to say to me, why? After all, this is my downtime. I can do anything I want when I'm off. Then that precisely is a problem. Because when you fully understand how performance works, you're going to come to this following yet simple conclusion. What you do when you're off determines how you perform when you're on. Number one, what you do during your downtime determines how much and the quality of performance you're going to have when you get to the place where you are called to perform. So instead of actually engaging in mindless activity, watching your life away, I will simply say, my friend, uh, ears may be a better alternative. Three steps you can consider when it comes to how to actually better use your time during your downtime. Number one, I will simply suggest the following. Uh, go to a room and say to yourself, I was about to spend two hours watching TV. How about I go into a room simply uh, shut the door and start doing the following three things. Number one, write down on a piece of paper what your vision is as far as life is concerned. And also focus on the ent entire vision. What you don't want your life to look like as far as what it is you're trying to achieve as, uh, in your life. Number two. Focus on the result-oriented goals that you have to set for yourself as far as the next seven days are concerned. What is it exactly you're trying to achieve when it comes to milestone as far as your work is concerned? But don't just stop there. Go on, my friend. Spend more time. Focus on, on the action-oriented goals you have to set as far as what you have to do in order to reach that particular milestone at the end of the week. These are the three uh, things you can do instead of watching TV for about two hours. But here's now the bonus I'm going to give to you. Once you've done that, don't just go back out there to watch TV. Do, do the, the following thing. Instead of going back there to watch TV, to watch the news, and to watch uh, videos and movies about uh, whatever is happening on the world, how about you focus on becoming the master of watching yourself perform at the highest level? Close your eyes. Now picture yourself Saturday next week. You have achieved all the results you're expecting as far as the week is concerned. So you got the result and you got the milestones. You have, you have done exactly all the homework. You've actually gone through all the meetings and met all the people you're supposed to meet for the week. And a place where you're not basking in that place of glory. You are simply uh, enjoying the fruits of your heart level. How does it feel? How does it smell? Where do you see yourself? How does it feel when it comes to how you're reacting in your body? Spend as much time as possible visualizing yourself in that particular context. Now, capture the essence of that place of victory. Capture the essence of that place of magnificence. And now, find a way to care with you as far as the next few days are concerned. And don't just stop there. Open your eyes now and do the following. Go now to your action-oriented goals for the week and say to yourself, I'm not going to wait until next week, but I'm going to start right now. So pick up your phone now, start calling, start texting, start emailing the people who are supposed to be getting together with us as far as this week is concerned and give yourself an early advantage by simply as getting them on the phone, getting them by email, getting by by text message to simply confirm that you're supposed to get together as far as the week is concerned. And why is this particularly important? Yeah, because when you do that, you're going to be give yourself a, an unfair advantage. Here's a funny thing. There was a book released a few years ago called The Unfair Advantage. In this uh, book, the authors are talking about a very interesting uh, framework that one has to consider when it comes to performance. And the framework is called MILES. This is stand for what? M for money. People have access to more money than you can actually uh, perform better and the outcome of their action can actually be better than yours, number one. Number two, insight and uh, intelligence. The people have access to more intelligence or more insight tend to perform better than you and to have access to better outcomes as far as your uh, competition is concerned. And for, for location, if I find myself in Hollywood, I have an idea to actually put together a movie, 
Right there and there, I have access to a better network of people can actually make help me turn this idea into reality compared to you being somewhere, I would say, in, uh, in Europe where you don't have access to the type of network I have left access to if I'm in Los Angeles. E, E for education. If I graduate, say, from Harvard and have this uh, Harvard uh, degree uh, on my wall compared to yours from a uh, new university, our competition is not going to be on the same level. So what they're saying is, when it comes to this thing, the one way to look at how you're going to perform is to simply look at uh, this framework, Mars. Now, it's not how you can actually turn this thing into your own advantage. On your off time, instead of actually binge watching TV, binge watching all this program, they have nothing to do where you're going. Again, focus on what I ask you to do. Focus on your vision. Focus on your end of a vision. Focus on the action result, uh, action oriented uh, goals. Focus on the result oriented goals. And when you actually do all these things, and also focus on exactly what you're going to do between now and Saturday next week, what's going to happen is you're simply going to start giving yourself an unfair advantage over the people who have access to more money, intelligence, insight, location, education, or status. If you've been enjoying this video, please make sure to share it with as many people as possible. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that next time we put together a video, you can be amongst the first one to see it. All right, now back to our presentation. You're gonna say to me, Timothy, this is not applied to reality. I'll simply give you just two examples. Number one, when it comes to this, this sport known as a Formula One, the reason why the days before the competition, the team get together and actually go to, uh, to location. They don't go there just to party and have a good time. They go there because they try to be very uh, precise and intentional. They simply say to myself, we have to go to the circuit. We have to go to the track and see exactly what kind of track it is. We're going to bring our crew. We're going to bring the driver. Why? Because we want to give the driver a feel when it comes to how to drive around that particular track. Number one. Number two, more importantly, we want to know what type of tires to put on that particular car and to see how it's going to go well. You're gonna say that's completely irrelevant. Oh my goodness, let me just tell you why this is absolutely apropos. The type of tires you're going to put on your car determine three things. How fast your car is going to go, how well you're going to be able to actually brake, and most importantly, how amazingly the engine is going to respond as far as the track is concerned. So if you want to know how to get your life to the next level, my friend, focus on what you're doing during your downtime or your off time. Last example, I'm going to stop right here. The reason why this young man, when they've actually made to the highest level, was able to outperform Everyone with access to deeper pockets when it comes to money, uh, access to better intelligence or insight when it comes to the, the job of actually being a Formula One driver, better location when it comes to where they were born as far as the birthplace is concerned, better education and better status. Do I know why Elton Senna was able to outbreak from everyone from the very beginning? Why? Because on his off time, on his downtime, when I was just doing other crazy things, he was focusing on how to become a better driver. He was simply close his eye and focus on uh, imagine himself uh, holding a wheel, a steering wheel and at the same time being able to simply uh, shift gears. And this was so evident not only in Monaco in 1984 but also in Suzuka when he was actually come just to try a car around a trap. This man simply showed us that what you do on your off time determines how well you're going to do when it comes to your on time. All right, my friend, I'm gonna stop right here. Before I go, just one quick thing. If you need any type of help when it comes to taking you from where you are right now all the way to the next step, my friend, reach out to us and we want to see how we can help you fine tune your technique and fine tune your culture to help you go from where you are right now all the way to the top where you saw did it belong. All right, my friend, I'm gonna stop right here. Thanks again for watching. Looking forward to sharing more of you in this to come on to the day good care and remember it's all about being intentional even on your off time all right take good care i'm out <laughs>